Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Leadership versus Management webinar. My name is Kimberly Brown Harden, and I'm the Northwest Regional Coordinator from the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Office. I'll be the host and question moderator for today. Our presenter this morning is Michelle Bradley. She's the Manager of Member Engagement for Midwest Collaborative for Library Services, also known as MCLS. I'd like to start off the webinar with a few announcements. This webinar is provided as a part of the Indiana Library Leadership Academy project, Ready to Lead, the INLA Leadership Toolkit. To register for other webinars available for this theme or other trainings available from the Professional Development Office, please see the Indiana State Library's event calendar, which can be found on our website at www.in.gov slash library. For a full list of our current in-person training menu, please see our continuing education website. The Indiana State Library has many ways we try to stay connected to library staff across the state. For weekly updates on upcoming trainings and to learn more about what's happening in libraries across the state, please subscribe to our weekly e-newsletter, The Wednesday Word. We also offer a blog which provides information about the Indiana State Collection, interview spotlights on Indiana library staff across the state, and information about upcoming events at the Indiana State Library. If you do have a question, just type it into the chat box on the upper left side of the screen. I'll be watching and will get your question to Michelle as soon as there's a good opportunity. There should be also time near the end for questions. This session is one hour, so you'll get one LEU for today. At the end of the webinar, please download the LEU after today's webinar. Click on the link, press download, and then you can then print it out and sign your name. Also, if you notice in the chat box, there is a link to today's survey. Please take a brief uh, survey, and it does help us to offer more trainings. As a result of one of the um, one of the issues that somebody brought about in a survey, I ended up um, deciding to email you all in advance the PowerPoint. So we really do look at those surveys. If at any point during the webinar you experience any sound issues, please see the sound issues box just below the chat box on the left side of the screen. If there is a global sound issue, we will announce it in the chat pod. If you are unable to resolve the sound issues you are experiencing, we are recording the meeting and you can watch it offline after the meeting has ended. Again, if there is a global sound issue, we will make an announcement in the chat box. So now it is my pleasure to introduce uh, to some of you Michelle Bradley. Michelle has held management and leadership positions for over 20 years in public libraries working in a variety of capacities, including branch manager, head reference librarian, public library manager for a joint use library, head of technical extension services, assistant director, and director. During her tenure at the Frankfurt Community Public Library, a recipient of the National Medal for Library Service, she was one of three staff to meet then First Lady Laura Bush in a ceremony at the White House. She currently works with multi-types of libraries throughout Indiana and Michigan, managing the member engagement activities of the Midwest Collaborative for Library Services. So at this time, I am going to turn the mic over to Michelle. Thank you, Kim, and thank you to the State Library for having me uh, do this webinar. And um, before we get started, these are sort of the um, things I hope to accomplish in our one hour. Uh, when Kim asked me to talk about leadership versus management, I thought that could either be uh, summed up in an infographic or it could be a semester long <laughs> course. Um, so this is what I'm hoping uh, that will be your takeaways today, um, that when we're done, you'll understand the difference between leadership skills and management skills, that you'll understand how leadership skills and management skills overlap. Uh, that you'll understand what a library leader looks like. And um, moving from management to leadership, that you'll know how to assess your own leadership skills 
and how to develop your leadership skills. So before we uh, get started, I'd like to know who is here. Uh, I'd like to know whether you are the library director, CEO, whether you're in a supervisory position where you have people reporting to you, or whether you're in a non-supervisory position. So I think we have a poll. Yep, the poll is open. The poll is open. Let's see, we've got... <clears throat> Supervisory at 50% so far. Nine library directors look like. Let's see, they're still going. The poll's still going. So. So most folks are supervisors. So it looks like we have about 50% uh, of you here today are in a supervisory role, but you're not the CEO. Uh, about a little less than 30% of you are the library director, and about 22% of you are in non-supervisory roles. So that gives me a good idea of who I'm talking to, and I think there's something in here uh, for everyone. Um, there's certain parts of this that will speak more to you uh, depending on what level you're at. So thank you for completing the poll. And we've got somebody who said they are HR. And one HR. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why are we talking about leadership? And why has this become um, such a hot topic lately? Um, so much so that uh, Kim's leadership uh, group is putting together a toolkit on it. Uh, because it's been identified as a great need in Indiana libraries. Through my work at MCLS, I've conducted uh, community conversations with hundreds of librarians throughout Indiana um, using the Harwood Aspirations model of conversations. And one of the areas that rose to the top in terms of concerns for the libraries was the need to develop and support new leaders. So we want you. <laughs> We also discussed skills for the 21st century library worker. And these were in a deep dive conversation. And management and leadership skills were among the most often mentioned skills needed. Um, other things that were mentioned were flexibility, adaptability, uh, being open to change, and um, continuously learning. And people in our conversations also said that was most lacking in library workers. Technology skills were, of course, mentioned. Um, but then you'll see leadership and management skills were repeatedly mentioned, um, including things like being strategic, having business acumen, marketing, data analysis, HR, leading change, and then specific to leadership, skills mentioned were being trustworthy, being transparent, and being ethical. The people in our conversations stated that the need for these skills has become so important now because of the large number of librarians who are retiring um, from long-held positions, um, who are retiring from management positions and retiring from director positions. And they also mentioned the fact that um, leadership um, is not taught in library school. Uh, so they're seeing a big need for that. Because both leadership and management skills are big areas of need, they often get talked about together, just like they did in the, these conversations, um, just like they are all mixed together here in this paragraph. <laughs> and um, they are, in fact, separate sets of skills. There's quite a bit of literature out there that talks about the difference between leadership and management. And some of the literature can come across as manager bad, leader good. <laughs> but I don't really see it that way. Um, but rather, they both include a body of skills um, that you need to learn, uh, that you need to practice, and that you need to hone over time. Um, and it's their continual skills that you need to be continually learning, no matter how many years of experience you have. Warren Bennis um, is widely regarded as the pioneer of leadership studies, and he says leaders are bo made, not born. And all of the managers that you've had and all of the leaders that you've seen throughout the library uh, profession, they were all once brand new managers, or they were aspiring leaders, 
or maybe they were even accidental leaders who had to step up to the plate because a situation forced them to. So they didn't come into their positions with all of the tools that made them good managers or effective leaders. And those who have been in leadership positions for a while often forget what it was like um, to be first-time managers and that they had to learn those. Actually, I was telling Kim, uh, putting this presentation together made me have to go back and think about what that was like um, and really reflect on um, my very first management position. So I also don't see it as a generational issue, um, but really just an experience issue. If you're a first-time manager, which you can be a first-time manager at any age, um, these are going to be new skills to you. So um, definitely not a generational issue. And as I'll continue to talk about here, good managers need leadership skills, um, and those have to be learned as well. But anyone can begin learning and practicing leadership skills, whether you're a manager or not. So I want to tell you a story about a first-time manager who really needed some leadership skills. <laughs> and um, I will admit to the fact that that's me. Uh, that's not only me in the picture, but the story is about me. <laughs> And I'm not necessarily proud of it, but it probably is typical of many first-time managers. Um, so I was at my first management job in a library as the manager of a branch that had several long-time and loyal employees. And I came in with all kinds of new ideas for how to make things better and you know, new procedures that would be better, new ideas for programs. Um, very enthusiastic with all my ideas. So I took my ideas to my library director at the time and um, told her all the things that I wanted to change. And um, her question to me was, how are you going to bring the other library staff on board with your ideas? And um, while this may not have been verbatim, I believe my response was, I'm going to tell them that this is the way we'll be doing things from now on. And her suggestion to me was that perhaps I should go and get their input. Um, that you know I needed to think about how um, these changes would impact them, uh, how it would make them feel if I made these changes, and um, to really go back and um, and do some talking to them. So I went home that night, and I said to my husband. I don't understand why I have to worry about people's feelings. <laughs> why can't I just tell them what to do and they do it? Yes, it's a true story. <laughs> Luckily, I had a library director who was very empathetic to the fact that I was new at this stuff and that I needed some guidance in how to get others on board with my vision. That just making people do what I want um, just because I'm their manager isn't the best way to go about it. And that I really needed to find a way to get people to want to follow my vision. My director was a leader uh, in this situation. She was showing me the way and she was bringing me along. Now just two years later, at the same library, and yes, I was still the manager, I had a person on my staff who was very smart and very capable, but she really did not seem to like her job very much. Um, she didn't really have um, a very positive attitude, and I, I just thought that um, she wasn't performing as well as she could be. Um, so rather than just telling her she needed to improve her attitude or that she wasn't performing up to snuff, um, I had a conversation with her, and um, I asked her whether she liked her job or not. And I found out that she was actually bored. She wasn't feeling challenged, and uh, we talked about what would make her job more rewarding. And based on that conversation, I was able to identify some different job responsibilities for her that built on her interests and her strengths. And she became a great employee at that library. She went on to get her MLS, and she is now the director at that library. Oh, cool. Now, I can't take responsibility for all of her success, uh, but I think that she would agree that that was a turning point. Um, so. You can learn leadership skills, and as a manager, you really need them if you want to be effective. We're all human, though, and we can have bad days and slip back into, why can't I just tell them what to do and they do it <laughs> mode. 
And leadership does take mindful practice, and you have to be intentional about it. And if you have a bad day, just reset the next day and remind yourself why it matters. So one thing to talk about uh, right off the bat in leadership versus management uh, that was illustrated in my story is that management gives a person positional leadership. A manager has influence over people through their position. I'm the boss, applesauce. <laughs> but most of the time, talking about leadership, we're talking about skills to influence people beyond what's granted to you just through your position. And an effective manager should have both management skills and leadership skills. However, beyond positional leadership, a leader can be found in any area of the organization, whether they're a manager or not. You can also be a leader in your community. You could be a leader in your family. You could be a leader in your church or other areas of your life. And most of those leadership positions are not positional leadership. Looking at the library organization, um, think about who can be a leader in your library. It could be the library director. It could be a manager. It could be an assistant. How about a circulation clerk or a children's librarian or even a custodian? Anyone in the organization can be a leader and can display leadership skills. It's just a different set of skills, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So what are management skills versus leadership skills? Web Junction uh, publishes a competency index for the library field, um, which includes um, competencies in all sorts of areas. Uh, but one section of their competency index is library management competencies. And um, they're, they list some broad categories. And if you actually go and look at the competency index, um, underneath of those broad categories, there's um, a detailed list of skills, knowledge, um, and experience that you should have to be considered competent in each of those roles. Um, but broadly, um, for managers, Web Junction has identified competencies as budget and finance, um, community relations, uh, working with your facilities, uh, knowing your laws, policies, and procedures, marketing, organizational leadership, personnel management, project management, staff training and development, strategic planning, and trustees and friends. So if you look at that list, a few things um, stand out about it. Uh, one is that you'll notice that several of the things listed here really line up with what Indiana librarians were talking about in their conversations uh, when they talked about the skills needed for the 21st century librarian. Um, Another is that if you want a roadmap for developing your management skills, this is a great resource. Um, as I said before, it, it has um, more detailed areas of knowledge under each of those broad cat categories. Another interesting thing to note is that organizational leadership is listed as a competency for managers. And lastly, you'll note that most of the management competencies have to do with things or processes rather than people. So budgeting and financing is a process. Uh, facilities are things and processes, laws, policies, procedures. Even the things that have to do with people uh, are still often about processes like staff training and development um, or personnel management, which might be more about how to interview people correctly for job interviews or how to evaluate staff. So we've looked at management competencies, but how is leadership different? Warren Bennis also uh, provides a matrix to talk about uh, the differences in skills between a manager and a leader. So Warren Bennis says a manager administers, a leader innovates. A manager maintains, a leader develops, a manager focuses on systems and structures like we saw in the management competencies. Well, the leader focuses on people and emotions. There's those darn feelings again. <laughs> a manager controls systems and people, a leader inspires people. A manager accepts the way things are, a leader challenges the way things are. A manager has a short range view, a leader has a long range perspective, a manager manages tasks, and a leader leads people. So again, this isn't a list to say that managing is bad and leading is good. 
Most managers do some of both on a daily basis. An example would be scheduling a public service desk. Uh, that's something a manager would have a responsibility for. It's a task that controls people and the system of how patrons are served. It's short term. It has to be done that day so you can operate business. That's a management task that you have to do to make sure your patrons are served. There are definitely times, however, when the manager who's making that public service desk schedule might need to use some leadership skills. Uh, there might be times when they need to step in um, because something is going on with one of their staff and they need to be attuned to um, what's going on with them and show some empathy for them. So if you're the director of a small library, you are probably managing and leading both on a daily basis. You have to have that long-term outlook and you also have to have that short-term outlook. You have to see the big picture, but you also have to take care of the processes. So as this uh, quote here says, um, they're not the same, uh, but they are necessarily linked and they are complementary. So although they're separate skills, um, if you are a manager, if you combine leadership skills with your management skills, um, you can generate improvements in your library in morale. Um, staff who are listened to and feel valued uh, will generate high employee morale. Um, if people have higher morale, it can boost productivity. And staff who trust their leaders um, generally feel better about the library and they're able to achieve more. Uh, quality leaders can help people feel proud of their contributions and they can inspire them to continually improve. And efficiency. Um, leaders who ask for feedback learn how to make processes more efficient. So what are some of the leadership skills we should be adding to our management skills? Um, this is more of Warren Bennis. He um, lists some leadership qualities or traits that leaders have. Um, and he talks about integrity, which is aligning words and actions with your inner values. Um, do you do what you say? Do you say what you mean? Um, and do you know what your inner values are? A leader uh, knows what their inner values are. They're very self-aware. Um, dedication, giving your whole self. So um, are you dedicated to the library and the patrons and the mission? Uh, magnanimity, giving credit where credit's due. So accepting personal responsibility for failure is also part of that. So don't take all the credit. Um, and don't throw others under the bus uh, when things go wrong. And um, leading can mean deeply affecting others. So uh, giving people credit is uh, very affecting for people. And humility, valuing all people equally, um, whether they're patrons or staff. And being open, listening to ideas of others, and seeing the big picture. And being creative, leaders get outside of the box. Um, they know how to take a new viewpoint. They can take risks and they can be curious. So let's see how this compares to how Indiana librarians defined leadership. When we asked librarians, what does a library leader look like? They hadn't just read a book. Um, they hadn't just studied scholarly literature and they didn't know we were going to ask the question. So this was just off the cuff. And this is what they said. They said that library leaders are inspirational, they're energetic, they're passionate, and they're humble. Um, that they have good communication skills and interpersonal skills. Um, that they model behaviors for staff and they lead by example. They have a vision, set the direction, and they can articulate the vision. Um, they're also strategic, they're confident, um, and they're not afraid to raise others up with them. Mm -hmm. They coach and inspire others to improve. And they're also engaged in the professional community, and they're invested in the library. So I like that. Without having read um, any books or scholarly literature, um, they're quite aligned uh, with what Warren Bennis said uh, the qualities of a leader were. You see the dedication. Um, you see the giving credit um, and the integrity. Humility. Humility. So those of you who are looking um, to become leaders or move up in positions, 
these are these are right here what library directors are saying they're looking for in people. So take a moment to reflect on people that you have worked with now or in the past. Mm -hmm. And is there anyone, whether they're a manager or a coworker, um, who's displayed some of the traits that we've discussed? And as you think about that person, think about what characteristics you admired most about them. Which of those traits did they most display? I'm going to go back so you can look at the um, traits again. And um, if you would, and you do not have to include the person's name unless you want to, um, if you could go to the chat box and just share with everyone what the trait or traits were that you admired. Passion and energy, leading by example. Can you hear Kim? They probably can. Okay. Uh, passion and energy, and leading by example. Laid back. Integrity. Decisive and respectful. They respected the confidentiality. Yes. That's a good one. Yes. Uh, uh, somebody says consistency with their integrity. So being consistent in what they say and do. Mm -hmm. Inspirational, invested. Yeah. Having a vision. Having a vision. Raised others up and were humble. Yes. That's my favorite. And bringing people up with them, other than rather than feeling threatened by them. Yes. I like caring deeply. Um, the one person that I'm thinking of, um, who was a past supervisor of mine, who would come to my mind, that caring deeply um, pops up for me with them. I actually had just moved into a, my first home. And uh, we didn't even have, this was before cell phones, we didn't even have our phone hooked up yet. Wow. Um, my furniture was there, but it was still in a big pile. Uh, I had moved in the day before. So I came to work that day, and I lived um, just five minutes from my library. So I went home for lunch, and uh, I found my cat dead on the floor. Oh, no. <laughs> it's been a long time. So I, <laughs> so I couldn't even call anybody, and obviously I needed to deal with it. So I had to go back physically to the library, and I walked into my supervisor's office. And in trying to tell her that I, I needed to go home to take care of something, I burst into tears. And I finally was able to get out. I have to go home because my cat is dead on the floor. Um, this supervisor understood that um, I had just moved into my house, that I had no way to contact anybody, um, that I was distraught. She took me home, and she helped me bury my cat. <laughs> That's an example of caring deeply. <laughs> And a dead cat story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, somebody else is very respectful and very compassionate of the staff. So that goes along with what you were saying. Respectful of the staff and yeah. passionate. Yeah. Team mentality. That was that. That's good. So I think most people have been able to type something into into the chat. Um, so. Now you have an image in your mind of someone that you want to emulate. And that's a great first step towards developing your own leadership skills, finding an exemplar and modeling their behavior. So what else can you do to move from management to leadership? Um, as Warren Bennis said before, a manager knows themselves. They're very self-aware. Um, so whether you're currently a positional leader or you're in a non-supervisory position, there are some things that you can do to assess your own leadership skills. And that is really important uh, if you want to take those steps um, to become more of a leader. Um, you need to identify your strengths, and you need to find the areas that you can work on to be a better leader. And there are many commercial assessments out there that your employer might subscribe to or that you can pay to use, like the Everything Disk Workplace. 
Um, that's a personality and behavior style assessment. Um, that can help you identify your motivators, your stressors, and potential limitations. Um, or there's another model of that called Everything DISC Work of Leaders. Um, those are um, both um, commercial products that you can pay to use. Another one is Leadership Practices Inventory, also known as LPI 360, which is um, a 360 assessment where you get input from bosses, peers, direct reports, and others about your leadership performance. And maybe some of you already use some of these in the workplace, um, but maybe some of you don't have access to those either. So what I want to do today is give you all some simple and free ways that you can think about assessing your leadership skills. So a really easy exercise that you can do to start assessing um, your leadership positioning is um, and whether others see you as a leader is to think about your circles of influence. So you may have different circles. Um, I have a circle here for work, which is primarily what we're talking about today, um, and the professional community. Um, you may have a circle for community. If you're the library director, um, maybe you want to see um, how you are seen as a leader in the community. Um, so basically, the concept here is to count the number of people who are not your direct reports, um, who come to you for advice. Um, so they don't have to. Um, if you're talking about the professional community, are there other library directors that are contacting you and asking you questions? Um, if you think about yourself in terms of the community, um, are other community leaders or community groups coming to you? Um, so the more people there are in your circle um, who are coming to you for advice but are not your direct reports, uh, the more you're seen as a leader. Um, so this is a really good exercise also if you don't have supervisory responsibility um, and you don't have any director, direct reports. Um, and if you do this exercise, you may see yourself emerging as a leader in a place you didn't even realize. Um, uh, oftentimes, we don't see our own strengths. Um, or you may uh, find yourself uh, emerging as a leader in one place, in one circle, more than another. And that's fine. Maybe you don't want to be the leader of your family. But maybe you do want to be seen as a leader uh, in your workplace or in the professional community of technical services librarians. And hopefully, when we're done with the webinar, this is a tool that you can really reflect on and think about um, and um, put some work to. Another way you can self-assess is by doing a personal SWOT. Um, that's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's the exact same tool you've probably all used in strategic planning for your organization, except in this instance, you can use it to think about your leadership abilities. And I put some leading questions on there um, to try to help you to think about uh, those different areas. Um, so for strengths, you might think about what do other people ask you to do for them? Um, or what skills do you hear from others that they recognize in, in you? And for weaknesses, you know, is there anything in your personality or character that holds you back? Maybe you have a fear of public speaking. Um, maybe you don't like criticism. Um, those are the sorts of things. And you want to be really, really honest with yourself. Um, nobody's gonna, going to see this but you. It's your tool, and um, it's, it's a personal tool. Um, opportunities, um, thinking about opportunities to build your leadership. I mean, one I can instantly think of is the um, INLA program that um, this webinar is a part of, which is the Indiana State Library's uh, Library Leadership Academy. Um, that exists as an opportunity to help build your leadership. Or maybe you might have an opportunities, my library is looking for people to serve on a committee. And you're, you're willing to step up and um, take that opportunity. And then thinking about threats, what setbacks might you encounter? I mean, if you might not be able to do anything about threats, uh, but recognizing them um, can help you to work around them um, or through them. So a threat might be, my boss is retiring soon, and they're my big supporter. Or maybe that's an opportunity. My boss is retiring soon. <laughs> um, so this also, this tool takes quite a bit of reflection and time, uh, which I hope you'll do after the webinar also. But while we're here uh, at the 
webinar, if everyone would just look at the first two questions, um, what do other people ask you to do for them, or what skills do others recognize in, in you, and share in the chat box one of your strengths. And be, um, be proud of them, and uh, brag a little. Translate. The ability to translate. I think outside the box. Flexible. That was an important one in our skills list. Honest opinion. Help them with patrons' computer questions. Coach them, allowing them to own their to come to their own answers. Listen to suggestions for change. Organization. Analysis and decision making. Some more folks are typing. <laughs> humor. Yes, I definitely apply humor to everything. Sense of humor. Seeing the potential in people. Organize. Trust. Confidentiality. I'm a people person, so they ask questions about how to handle situations with people. Helping staff decompress by listening to them before we open our library. <laughs> Tall and able to reach high places. Tall and able to reach <laughs> high places. <laughs> Love it. Trustworthy. Want to find out the answers to their questions. Listen to them. Open door policy. Somebody else says writing. So there's a variety of mm -hmm. strengths um, oh, uh, coming up. Leadership. Servant right. leadership yeah. was listed. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, you all have individual strengths that are different from everyone else's. Mm -hmm. And this is the start of this exercise for you. So you have uh, a way to start filling in that box after this webinar. And um, it's something that you'll, you'll want to reflect on. And it's something you should you know, maybe do every year. That's a good exercise. I like that. So once you've done some assessment of yourself, how can you start developing your leadership skills? So this is from How to Be a Leader, Not Just a Manager. It lists five quick ways to develop leadership skills. And this can most certainly be done by anyone, whether you're a manager or not, and whatever level you're at, which is evaluate your values, beliefs, and ethics. Um, and remember, a leader knows themselves. So they, they know what their values, beliefs, and ethics are. And another um, suggestion or tool to help you with that is maybe think about writing your own personal mission statement, um, just like the library has one, and um, your own set of values. And sometimes just thinking about that and putting it down uh, on paper can help you solidify that. And, and you have a map uh, to work with. Um, and your ethics. Uh, demonstrate your values every day now that you know what they are. Show people that you believe in them. Ask people how you can help them su succeed and do that over and over. And those are simple five quick ways. Other ways to demonstrate your leadership, and um, this is for everybody, but for those of you in non-supervisory roles, um, these, uh, there are some things in here specifically uh, for you. Um, that you can do as a front-level staff person who doesn't, uh, doesn't supervise anybody. Um, so be seen as someone who solves problems. Uh, if you notice a problem, come up with a few solutions for how it might be solved uh, before you go to your supervisor. Um, they're definitely going to see you as a leader if you do that. Um, they're used to people just coming to them with problems. <laughs> So um, having some solutions will um, help you be seen as a leader, and also being open to other people's ideas for solving problems. So you also might not just come up with some ideas of your own for how to solve the problem, but maybe you'll talk to a few of the staff and, and say, here's some, what, what do you guys think? What are some solutions to this problem? Um, helping others to be successful, you can do that no matter what, what role you're at. Um, take responsibility for your mistakes. Um, don't point the finger, don't throw other people under the bus, and don't hide your mistakes. Um, if you're honest and open about having made mistakes, um, you will definitely um, 
shine. People will um, respect that. Um, be a risk taker. Think outside the box. Um, be open-minded. Uh, if the library comes up with a new policy or a new program, don't just be a naysayer. You know, don't say, what does that have to do with libraries? Be open and, um, you know, give it a chance. And be confident. Uh, your ideas are just as good as everybody else's. And contribute your ideas. And be proactive about it. Uh, don't wait for people to ask you what your ideas are. If you have an idea, um, send it up. Send it up. Uh, people definitely want to know. And if you're on the front lines, um, you're interacting with people every day. And you probably see better ways to do things. So don't be afraid to do that. Uh, as we talked about before, give credit to others. Um, so um, you can just mindfully do that um, as good things happen during the day. And um, be proactive with your communications at all times. Um, so don't wait for your boss to ask you what the status of a project is. Give them regular updates. There's nothing more annoying as a supervisor than to have to continually go back and say, where are you on this? Where are you on this? Where are you on this? So it would be very appreciated <laughs> uh, if you were proactive with communications. And keep other people in the organization in the loop, too, even if it doesn't seem like it has anything to do with them. Um, and address difficult things and difficult people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, don't avoid the problem. Um, if you're having uh, problems with another coworker, um, you know, a leader would try to address the problem with the person themselves, which might not always work. But um, if you are then going to your supervisor with the problem um, and you've already tried to deal with it yourself, um, you will definitely be seen as having leadership abilities. Um, listen. Listening can be hard. We all want to get our points of view across. Uh, so listening is very important. And being optimistic and being focusing on the positive. Um, if you have a negative attitude towards everything, um, that doesn't lend itself towards um, leading and inspiring others. So another a simple way to take actions to develop your leadership is to set a daily intention or a weekly intention. Um, daily makes it very mindful. Um, so I'll say daily. But <laughs> um, So think about um, what are the traits that you admire in another leader that you want to emulate? Um, what were some of the weaknesses that you identified in your personal SWOT um, that you want to work on? And um, every day, set an intention around those things that you've identified in your self-assessment. You know, maybe you realized that you don't have very many people in your circle of influence and you want to grow that. You know, so maybe your intention for that will be, I intend to um, grow my network and uh, meet more people in the library profession. Um, or maybe it's, I intend to read a book on leadership this month. I intend to think about two solutions to any problem before I take it to my supervisor. Um, or I intend to talk honestly to my coworker about a difficult situation today. So thinking about uh, your self-assessment, what will be your first intention? And um, feel free to add it and share it in the chat box. And you can take a moment to reflect on it and think about it. To think about my intention for the day, this is something I hear in yoga as well. Being aware of my actions. So I intend to be aware of my actions. Practice patience, speak thoughtfully. I intend to quickly share what I learned in management meetings.
I intend to be more involved outside of the library. Keeping an open mind. Everyone is different and solves problems in their, their own unique way. I intend to apply for leadership training. Good. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. Be aware of what others are doing and let them know you appreciate them. Yeah, that's a good one too. Come up with my mission statement and read it every day and try to live up to it. That's a great idea. Yeah. Intend to do consistent training because I can always learn more. I love that mission statement one. I never think about doing one for myself. Try to better inspire the creativity and talents in my staff. I intend to focus on more strategic planning. Still got some more folks typing. <laughs> more organized. I intend to thank someone every day for their efforts. That's just one of the best things is just tell somebody thank you and I appreciate you. Encourage and motivate others to take the lead in projects. Let go of those things I can't control. Listen without anticipating. That's a hard one. <laughs> yes, yes. More organized. Okay, feel free to continue um, entering if you are, are still working on those. Um, so we've actually put everything in place for you to create a simple personal leadership development plan. Um, you've identified an exemplar or exemplars and thought about what traits that you want to model and work on. Um, you've assessed your circles of influence um, to think about how others see you as a leader. Um, you've done a personal SWOT. Uh, you will do one. Of course, you didn't do it in this <laughs> webinar. Um, where you're going to think about your strengths, think about your weaknesses, what opportunities are there to develop your leadership, and what threats are standing in the way. And you're going to set daily intentions. So um, this is a simple personal leadership development plan. And if you're mindful about this and you're intentional, all of these activities can help you to develop your leadership skills, whether you're in a positional leadership role or not. And it's a constant journey. And just the fact that you're here means that you've already set out on that journey. So I hope when you leave this webinar, um, you'll work on your personal leadership development plan and that you'll share it with your supervisor. And let them know that you're intentionally trying to build your leadership skills. And thank you, everyone, for participating uh, and sharing all of, all of your ideas and thoughts in the chat box. Um, now back to management. <laughs> if you're a manager, don't just rely on your leadership skills. Um, you've built all your leadership skills, and you've set a vision, and everyone's following you. And, um, but you need to have those foundational management skills under your belt. You don't want to be the Pied Piper leading people off of a cliff. Um, you do want to know your stuff, and you want to lead people in the right direction. So leadership versus management uh, was the title of this talk. But it's really not leadership versus management. It's really leadership and management, different skill sets that go hand in hand. And that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle. That was great. 
Um, I just uh, put in the uh, link to the survey for today's webinar. Again, it is so important that you fill these surveys out. Again, that's how we try to improve our webinars, and this is how we try to improve our processes as well. Also.